Hey everyone, and welcome back for another sew along video where today I'm gonna show you how you can construct this really simple kombucha cover. So I've been getting a lot of questions since I posted my how to make a SCOBY from scratch video on these bowl covers and where people can buy them. Now I think that they have things like this that you can purchase on Amazon. And if I find any, I will put them in the description box down below. But these particular ones that I use for my SCOBY hotels and my kombucha brew, um, I actually make these myself. They're super simple to construct and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do that today. You're gonna need some fabric. Now again, you can use fat quarters, you can use scraps. It really is just gonna depend on what size cover you're gonna be making that will determine what size or what amount of fabric you're gonna need. You're gonna need some scissors or a rotary cutter, some sewing pins, a tape measure or a ruler, a needle and thread, some kind of marking pin to mark your fabric, and some quarter inch wide elastic. So once you have your fabric that you're gonna be using for your bowl covers all ironed and pressed, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take those fabrics and you're gonna lay them right sides together. So for me, I'm only using a single print, but if you're using a coordinated print, you would just wanna lay the pretty sides of the fabric facing each other. And the easiest way I've found to do this and to get an accurate measurement is to take the bowl or jar that you're gonna be making a cover for and you're gonna essentially add four inches. You want two inches all the way around, which is gonna add up to four inches total diameter larger. So I went ahead into my kitchen and found a bowl that was 11 inches in diameter because this one is seven inches. So you're gonna take that bowl, you're gonna lay it down on your fabric and you're gonna trace around it. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You could also trace the top of this bowl here and you could take a ruler and just measure two inches all the way around it. So essentially you'd end up with two circles drawn on your fabric and you would cut out the larger one. This method just seems to be a lot easier. It's a lot more efficient and I found it's a lot faster. Now again, this is the back side of the fabric, so you can use just a regular marking pen. So I do have these fabric pens, they're called Freon pens, so you can draw the line on there and you can iron it off. Again, this is on the back side of the fabric, so it really doesn't matter what kind of pen you use. Um, I would probably stay away from a Sharpie as it will probably bleed through the fabric and then you will see it on the front. And now you can see the circle that you've drawn on your fabric. You can take a rotary cutter, a pair of scissors, and you're gonna cut out both layers of fabric. If you prefer, you can pin it ahead of time just to keep them from shifting around while you're cutting, but it's really up to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and put four pins in here. Now cut out your circle. leaving about a two or three inch opening. This is gonna to be to turn our project right sides out. All right, so make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end of your line of stitching and let's sew around here. Now you're leaving an opening in your project so you can turn it right sides out. So you can really leave this opening as large or small as you want. I found that about two inches is enough for me, but some people prefer a four inch opening that they can really put their whole hand into to turn your project. So once you have this sewn and you've left your opening, turn your project right sides out. Once that's done, you can take a turning tool or a pencil or whatever you have, and you can kind of use it to push those seams out all the way around your cover. All right, once this step is done, you're gonna head over to your ironing board and you're gonna ease those seams out and press this nice and flat. So before you start ironing, you can go ahead and again take that tube turner or whatever kind of turning tool you're using just to press out those seams. Thank you. 
Now the easiest way I found to do this next step before we sew and make the channel for the elastic is to actually take that edge that you're going to have to hand sew shut and kind of turn it under so it's lined up the way you want it and then give it a press. Now that we've finished pressing our cover, we're gonna head back to our machine and we're gonna sew another half an inch from the edge all the way around. This time, however, we're gonna be completing the circle. This is gonna give us that channel for the elastic to rest into. Make sure you backstitch at the start and the stop and let's get going. So for this next step of the project, you're gonna need either a safety pin or a bodkin and your piece of quarter inch elastic. The beginning diameter of my cover before I started to sew was 11 inches. So you're gonna take that diameter and you're gonna subtract two. So again, you're gonna take that beginning diameter of your fabric that you cut and subtract two inches. This will be the length of the piece of elastic that you need to cut. All right, so now you're gonna take your cover, your piece of elastic that you cut, and a bodkin or a safety pin, and you're gonna thread your elastic through that channel. Now this part can be kind of tricky because this elastic piece is really small. You obviously want to kind of hang on to the opposite end so it doesn't get lost inside your cover. And this is where I just hold on to the elastic and kind of even out the scrunched up fabric. You're gonna take this over to your machine. And you're gonna lay this piece on top of this one, making sure again that they're not twisted. And you can straight stitch, zigzag stitch it, or whatever you want down the elastic. You're just gonna to wanna to back stitch this quite a bit to really reinforce that these two pieces don't come unhooked. So let's go ahead and do that now. these elastic pieces are stitched together go ahead and cut your threads and you can gently ease your elastic inside your tube here kind of stretch out your fabric so it's even on all the sides and there we go it's a good idea to take this cover over and make sure it's gonna fit because at that point when you stitch it closed, you can't take the elastic out and redo it. So that's usually what I do. I've already made a couple of these, so I know they're gonna fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this up. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can whip stitch it by hand with a needle and thread, or if you don't mind having an exposed seam, you can also take your sewing machine and sew it closed. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I'll show you a picture of the other one that I hand stitched. So it's really personal preference on how you wanna close this opening. So make sure if you're using your sewing machine too that you're really careful not to sew onto that piece of elastic that's in there. You're really gonna to wanna to stay as close to the edge as you possibly can. go. So that's it for this really simple sewing tutorial where I walked you guys through how to make these kombucha jar covers and I hope you guys will give them a try for your own brew or your SCOBY hotels at home. Um, if you guys do make some of these please tag me over on Instagram so I can see all your lovely me maids there. 
So until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.